Hi, I'm Jeff. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use FreeCAD and an Excel spreadsheet to design a cabinet that has two drawers and a cupboard area. This is a follow-up to my video on using spreadsheets in the design process. And in this video, I take it further than I did in the previous one by trying to design a real-world example using the spreadsheet and FreeCAD. Stick around. This is a follow-up to my spreadsheet video and what I wanted to do was explore how far I could use the spreadsheet workbench in my workflow and see what I could do with it before it became unwieldy. The idea was to design a small cabinet that contained two drawers, a display area and a cupboard with a shelf and a door. I wanted to incorporate proportional design which would allow me to change the overall dimensions of the model and have it automatically recompute the dimensions of the components. And I also wanted to identify limitations in the spreadsheet workbench. I did try to incorporate proportional design, but it wasn't a high priority, nor was making all the pieces fit correctly. The goal was to see what I could do and to learn from it. I developed the spreadsheet in Excel, which would allow me to create models from the spreadsheet by importing it. I grouped specifications into logical areas to make it easier to understand, and I named each cell to take advantage of the spreadsheet workbench's ability to name cells when they are imported. The spreadsheet itself is mostly data and simple formulas. There is nothing fancy in the spreadsheet as the spreadsheet workbench does not support the same comprehensive function list as Excel. I didn't export the spreadsheet into CSV and intended to create models from the spreadsheet directly. So let's have a look at the spreadsheet in more detail. I did a screen capture of the whole modeling process. And as I'm talking about each section of the spreadsheet, I will include a speeded up version of that section that's being modeled in a small window in the bottom right corner of the screen. So the cabinet is specified in this section here. You can see in the spreadsheet that the cells in gray are the cells in which I wished to be able to specify values. Cells in white are those that are calculated from the other cells. So what I wanted to do was have a height of about 400 mil and then the width would be about 70%. So if I change the 400 millimeters, it would recompute the height of the cabinet and then the width. So in this case, as we can see in this section here, the cabinet height as I specified was 400 and 70% of that's 280. So it's automatically calculated that. It has also then calculated the internal width and height and depth of the cabinet based on the height of the cabinet and the thickness of the cabinet, which is here. I also wanted to have three mortises to mount the draw blades. And that is specified here and here. So what will happen is we will punch three mortises on each side for each draw blade. And these mortises will be tapered and when we put the, board, the draw blades in place, we'll use a small wedge to lock them in place, making a very, very strong joint. Now, one other thing I should mention is that I have decided to make the depth of the cabinet 120, and I've wanted to also have a ship lapped back on it. So what that means is that the bottom of the cabinet will not be as deep as the top and there will be dados in the sides of the cabinet which will allow me to slide a back in behind the cabinet. So therefore, where I've specified here 120 for the cabinet depth, when we come to working out the back, it's actually going to be a little bit narrower because of the, the dado. 
So the internal depth is how deep the cabinet will be. I've also chosen to put dovetails in the top to hold the top and the bottom into the cabinet sides and the number is specified here and I think to be honest I probably got a little bit carried away by choosing five it probably would have been better to have had three but you know wanted to see how we go. The cabinet also has what's called a draw box. The draw box contains two graduated drawers which means that the top drawer is shorter than the bottom drawer and between each drawer there will be a draw blade and this is all specified in this section here. We've got is draw blades of 10 mil and there will be one at the top of the draw box and one in the middle and the draw blades are there to provide not only dust protection but also a base in which the drawers themselves can run. The height of the draw box is 20% of the cabinet which means it'll be about 80 millimeters and in this instance it doesn't really matter but I think in the future when I actually do design a cabinet using these principles I would make it bigger because it looks out of shape or out of proportion and the other problem is that the drawer sides or the size of the drawers essentially become 27 and 37 mils respectively which isn't particularly high um, in imperial you're looking at a little over an inch and maybe about an inch and a half something like that so it's not a they're not very big drawers in comparison to the rest of the cabinet but it was a good learning experience to see how this all came together in this spreadsheet I've also done a little bit of playing around to work out a table of how to um, figure out how many draw blades we would need for the number of drawers and then from there to calculate the height of each drawer that's sort of done here and whilst that's easy to do in Excel it's not really possible in the FreeCAD spreadsheet workbench because the functions that you would use just simply don't exist. The basic design of the drawers is the same. The only difference is that the top one is not quite as tall as the bottom one. Both of the drawers are designed to be piston fit. The sides of the drawer are quite thin, requiring the use of draw slips. And the draw slips are there as a way of mounting the bottom of the drawer to the sides but they also increase the bearing surface on the bottom of the draw sides. And the draw slips not only make for a stronger draw, they also make it more stable because there is more of the draw in contact with the draw blade. The draw slips are specified here. What we have is a draw slip height of about 12 millimeters, a groove height of three, which is the groove for the bottom, and then the depth of the bottom is four mil. Draw slips are typically cut from the same board as the draw side, as this gives a much better grain and color match. And the groove can either be cut using your table saw or your router table. The draw bottom is just a simple sheet of solid timber. In this case, it will probably be made up from smaller pieces that are glued together. Um, it will be about six millimeters thick and have a tongue of about three millimeters, which is inserted into the draw slip. To cater for expansion of the draw bottom, the draw bottom will only be glued into the draw front and it will be allowed to slide back and forth within the draw slip. The draw bottom also has a tongue which is inserted into a groove in the draw front and this is then glued in place. The top section of the cabinet will have a display area and a cupboard area. And the idea of that was to put something for display and then have a storage area next to it with a door on it. There's a divider that goes from top of the drawer box to the top of the cabinet and on the left will be the display area, on the right will be the cupboard 
The display area and the cupboard are separated by a board that runs from the top of the drawer box to the top of the cabinet, with the left being the display area and the right side being the cupboard. The cupboard will then have a door put on the front. In this case, I didn't give enough consideration to the proportions between the display area and the cupboard area. And I set the cupboard to be 75% of the cabinet width, which is here. The problem with that is that the internal width of the cabinet is about 280 millimeters. And that meant that the cupboard took up 174 of that. And the divider was 15, so effectively we ended up with a very, very small display area, which is not really what I wanted. However, it does illustrate the point of uh, what I was trying to achieve, which is a proportional design, even though it was a bad one. The spreadsheet also includes the specifications for an adjustable shelf, but in this case, I didn't add it in the model. The cupboard has a simple raised panel door. The bottom rail is bigger than the top rail because when you look down on it, then it will make it look like they're roughly the same. And it's, this is a standard design principle used in furniture making, especially for doors. The joinery for the door will be done using mortise and tenons. And the intention is to use a floating tenon, which would be inserted into a mortise that was created with a router or a festival domino or something like that. The grooves for the door will go the full length of the rails and will be stopped on the styles so that they don't go into the mortises for the floating tenon. In the model that I've done, I've just simply pushed them all the way through, but you will be able to see where I'm getting at. In the model, I've made the grooves in the styles the full length of the style. But in practice, you wouldn't do that because when you come to glue it together, there would be small rectangular holes at the top and the bottom of the door that need to be filled. So what you would do in practice is that you would stop the grooves before the mortises for the floating tenon so that they are then hidden once the door is glued together. So what did I learn from this? One of the things that worked really well is that if you use a spreadsheet and import it into your models, then the dimensions are consistent between FreeCAD files, which means that when you come to assemble things, they come together much better. The FreeCAD spreadsheet workbench does a pretty good job of importing the Excel spreadsheet, which makes life easier. But on the limitation side, you need to import the spreadsheet into each model, which is not a big deal, except that there is no dynamic linking to the spreadsheet. What this means is if you make changes in the spreadsheet, you then have to go and make changes in every file that it's been imported into. I note on the FreeCAD forums that they uh, have been talking about doing this, but it doesn't appear that it has been implemented yet at least in version 0.17, which is what I'm using. Also, the spreadsheet workbench doesn't quite work as I expected. Function names are imported in uppercase and are not recognized until converted into lowercase. And this causes problems because if you use a lot of functions, then obviously you're going to have to do the case conversion in every model that uses the spreadsheet. Functions are not always compatible between Excel and the FreeCAD spreadsheet workbench. For example, the round function in Excel takes a parameter but doesn't in FreeCAD. And what I've started to do is use the trunk function to convert to integer because it's compatible between the two. The only downside, is, as mentioned, is that it, Excel brings it into uppercase. And the other thing is it's easy to forget to name a cell in the Excel spreadsheet, which means that when you import it into the model, it's not automatically named and you have to go and fix that in both places or several places, depending on how you use it. But overall, I found that this worked quite well. 
limitations notwithstanding. You do need to put a, a fair bit of thought into the structure of the spreadsheet. And even in this simple example, there were a lot more parameters than I initially expected. Some of that was my own fault. And moving forward, I think what I would do is instead of modeling the dovetails on the draw sides, I would simply just model the draw sides as rectangles. And then when I actually come to make it, I would use dovetails then not in the model. And I think that would make the modeling process much easier. Well, I hope you found that interesting. As you can see, designing a real world cabinet using FreeCAD and spreadsheets is a doable thing. At the moment though, there are a few limitations in FreeCAD, which I'm sure will get resolved in, in time. So we just need to work around them. But if you did find this video interesting, I invite you to subscribe and click the notification bell below so you stay up to date with our videos. If you didn't like it, click the dislike button as well. And please leave us a comment, let us know what you think. As an added bonus, in the description below, there is a link to a file that contains all the models and the spreadsheet that I used in this video. It's a free download. I invite you to download it, have a bit of a play and learn, and please leave me some feedback on it. Thank you very much for watching.